Sir, basically is a consultant physician and endocrinologist and uh, at the Pondicherry Institute of Medical Sciences and uh, new medical center that is at Pondicherry. And sir is a patron of RSSDI. Sir is a co-chair of ICMR India B study. And sir is a chair of diabetes in young registry and former national president of RSSDI and API. And sir is a former dean of Indian College of Physicians. Apart from it, sir was also a former professor and head of the endocrinology at Jipmer and PIMS. Sir, I warmly hand over the session to you and the topic which sir will be dealing is in regards to time to move the needle that is interchangeable glargin, the plethora of evidence. Sir, podium is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, my dear esteemed chairpersons and our very dear friends, is a talk before the lunch and I assure you I will finish it before time. Dear friends, uh, you know, we just now saw from the two earlier talks, the basic tenet of the talk was that insulin is an imperative need at the appropriate time. And not to give insulin that particular time is no more acceptable today. There are the two sayings which I have taken from Sanofi. They said two, two important things. They said we start insulin late and escalate still later. You know, that is applicable to all insulin therapy. We start late and escalate later. So the, the, the theme of the three talks that we have put in the program is to, is, to, is to look into that and see how we can give most affordable, appropriate, available and accessible insulin to everybody in our country. Dear friends, uh, I must tell you that, uh, that you know insulin is a molecule which has a molecular weight about 5,800 kilodaltons. There are five characteristics of this insulin. Number one, it, is, it comes from the living organism, from the yeast or, or from whatever culture, bacteria or the animal cells. It is a comprehensive physicochemical structure which can be seen by the spectroscopy. And all the insulins so far has to be given parenterally, either IV, IM or SC. And uh, they are very sensitive to temperature and also to the manufacturing condition. And finally, since they are proteins, they are also immunogenic. Dear friends, uh, I work for the Government of India and Government of India is very fond of biosimilars. I must tell you why. Forget about the field of diabetes. In the field of cancer, the biosimilars have taken over and it has made the treatment affordable to everybody in the country. Almost all the anti-cancer drugs are biosimilars. What is a biosimilar insulin? A biosimilar insulin is basically a biological drug that is similar to an existing insulin. It can be similar to Aspar, similar to Glargin, similar to uh, Degludec. It is, it, is, it, is, it is similar to one exit insulin, but cannot be considered an exact copy. Therefore, what you should do, you should compare it. You should generate evidences. That's my job today. You have to prove it to the world, <coughs> to the uh, CDSCO or to the DCGI, to whoever the appropriate authority, that this drug is not exact copy of the original drug, but it is potent and it is equal in its action. And you know, there are different manufacturing processes, like we have different cell lines, we have the different protein source, extraction, purification, so the difference. Now, since they're derived from the living cells and done by biotechnology, they're very heterogeneous and also makes them very difficult to standardize. Therefore, there is a need for, for generating evidences to say that they work, which, uh, which Jyoti beautifully said that insulin has to be given and affordable insulin is in need of the time. And please remember, this is, a, this, is a, this is a tagline that government of India accepts that biosimilars are not bioidenticals. They are not biomimics. And as claimed by many, they are not, not, not bio better. So they are biosimilars or biosimilars. They have come to stay in our country and many countries of the world. I'll show you 39 countries where this, this has been accepted. They are biosimilars, are biosimilars which does the job without, with, with, with absolutely perfectly. Dear friend, this is a slide which all of you know. I just want uh, to put it here to say that, you know, the, 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 the rising prevalence of diabetes and the focus on the, on the South Asian countries, vis a -vis world, you will find that 1 in 11 adults today are living with diabetes. The number of adult diabetes expected to reach 133 million by 2030 and, uh, and, and about uh, 152 by 2045. One in two are still undiagnosed and a very large mortality globally 
uh, and, and 700,000 and beyond, and about a lot of money, $10 billion. And this is a very important slide, which was alluded to uh, some time back. I must tell you that there's a clinical inertia in the real world for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Besides what, what Jyoti has described so clearly, you know, if you want, there are two types of intensification. To make oral drugs intensify from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, or to intensify insulin. Now, if somebody is on one oral drug and the H1C is beyond 7, to intensify to 2, we take 3 years. Just imagine. And we are a country where diabetology is science. We are a country where Department of Diabetology is established in 17 medical colleges today. 17 medical colleges. And, and the National Board is considering for a, for a very, very particular course for diabetes. If the person of two anti-diabetic drugs and the H1C again beyond 7, I'm not defining how much beyond, we take 7.2 years to add the third drug or change over to insulin. So there's a lot of insulin, the tablet inertia. But coming to the median time to intensify insulin, you look at the, if somebody is on one OAD and H1C is 8.7%, 8 we take 7.1 years to change over to insulin from oral, single oral drug. Even on the two oral drugs and the H1C of 9.1%, we take 6.1 years to change over to insulin. This is not my own data, this data from somebody from this part of the country living in the United Kingdom now, Kamles Khunti, and this is the data from 81,000 patients over a data link. So, you know, so this is a very important thing to say that we have a lot of inertia in initiating insulin. Now, this I will not say so beautifully, my colleague has said, I will not throw this, but I want to draw attention to this particular sense. Beyond the CCT, beyond UKPDS, beyond Accord, beyond BADT, beyond any study, in 1985, BMJ gave a slogan, which is the last sentence of this slide, uh, which was not in Jyoti's slide, so I wanted to project this. The insulin provides a great sense of well-being. So we, we are talking today glycemic happiness, euglycemic um, euphoria. So this well-being is given by insulin, you ask anybody, they will say you that. You know, the, we, we, we in South, uh, Professor Mohan uh, honors people who live 100 years beyond, beyond, beyond with, with diabetes, despite diabetes. That's called full life despite diabetes program. Majority of them say they're on insulin. They have a great sense of well-being. We have to give a scientific data to the world, which we're doing today. Dear friends, I will not say this further to save time. You know, the H1 reduction by 1% gives you benefit which we cannot, which we cannot imagine. Death prevented more than 20%, microbes complications almost 40%, and MI by 15%. This is a theme which has been discussed by, 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 by my friends uh, very well. I will not say this again, uh, but dear friends, I will see that the, if you look at the low and the middle, LMIC and MMIC is the word that we use in the government sector. If you leave, leave, look at the insulin volume use, I just make a long story short to say that the majority of the global insulins comes from three companies. And they occupy, they take 92% of the insulin used in the LMIC and MMIC. Only 8% trickles down to the companies that, that we have in our country, only 8%. Dear friends, if you look at the access diabetes care, I'm not repeating what has been discussed again. I took out those slides. You will find that tens of thousands of type 1 diabetics who need insulin to survive and 30 million beyond type 2 diabetics who require insulin do not have access to a reliable and affordable supply. 86% of type 2 diabetics are unable to access the insulin they need. This is Africa data from the Africa. And 63% households with low-income countries are unable to afford insulin at all. Dear friends, you have heard the name of Ban Ki-moon. Ban Ki-moon was the, was the famous proverbial UN Secretary General. He was there for 10 years for the first time. And it's, uh, it was with 2007 and 2016. And that the time when I was in the ministry. And you know, we had a lot of interaction with him. I learned three things from him. It is in the record. Number one, he said, that he, 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 he gave the concept of Millennium Development Goals. You know, this is a sustainable development all, all of us know Sustainable Development Goal, MDG and SDG. The second concept he gave, he appealed to the G17 countries that they have to take care of the health and education of the, all the countries. 
The third thing he said, which is very prophetic for our discussion today, Ban Ki Moon's statement is still resounds in our ears, and it's, it's noted. He said, there's a great disparity in the treatment of diabetes in our country. He said there's a 10 by 90 global diabetes expense paradox. He said 90% of the entire expense for diabetes goes to 10% of the people. 90% expense, 10% of people, that's the other side of the globe. Only 10% of the entire expense comes to the 90% of people who are with diabetes. I think it was a very prophetic statement. He made this statement in 2015, and it is still true, still true. Dear friends, this is the another statement, you know, I, excuse me for Sarkari statements. This is the talk by another person from Gujarat, Mr. Mandabia, to whom I report today. Uh, he's the Minister of uh, Health. Now he said in a meeting about four or five days back, the nation's health is moved by two issues. I don't know how it took it up. I would never expect. He said, nation's health is moved by two things. One is research, innovation. I think it was prophetic. Maybe his talk was prepared by Rajesh Bhushan. Rajesh Bhushan is my secretary. I don't know, but he said this, very prophetic. No, two things are important, research and innovation. And he said <clears throat> that we must have the Made in India pride. That is, he has taken from PM. Now, I'll give one example. One biosimilar insulin, you know which one is this, brought down the prices of the new insulin. It was selling at 400 plus, it came down to 157, one gradually went up, but it came down drastically in all the, all the insulins. And also, if you look at the, the topic which uh, Dr. Jyoti Dev just hinted and uh, left for me to give the evidences, this Biocons interchangeable insulin is again a made in India story and is a remarkable insulin with great quality, appropriateness, affordability, and some robust clinical data I'll present to you. Now, I will also very, very, very passionate to present this slide that you will find the price of insulin has increased over the years three times, from 2002 to 2013. Look at the price of the oral drugs. They are the same or they have come down. They have come down today. Generic orals are for a song. So, you know, the price of insulin has developed by three times. Therefore, we have to see whether this interchangeable collagen, we have enough evidence to use it because you cannot use something which has no evidence. Is that we practice evidence-based medicine, so my job is that only today. This has been shown by Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jyoti, I will not show that. I must tell you that this insulin glargin, interchangeable glargin, has been approved in the major markets of the country. USFD approval in 2020, EMA in 2018, and, and you know, interchangeable designation, I'll come to that at the end of my talk, it came last year. It has been used in the India from 2009, 2009. It has been used in Korea, 2018, PMDA, Malaysia, TGA. It has been used in many countries in the world today. And look at the type of, type, type of uh, uh, research and the evidence generation uh, exercise has gone through. It has gone through global phase three trial for the type one diabetic. We call it Instride one for about 560 patients of 52 weeks tried in US, Canada, Czech Republic, Estonia, Germany, Hungary, Latvia, Romania, Slovakia, SA and UK. Uh, and, and also it has gone through the, the trial in the type two diabetes that's called Instride two in, in, the, in the US. It's completed and other many other countries. And it has also gone trial on the on the on the on a switching because that was necessary for the approval uh, for certain approval by the US FDA and other other countries. It has gone a switch approval, which I'll describe it in a minute. That's called Instride 3 study. Apart from that, we have few short studies from our country and other countries, which I'll describe to you. One of the authors of the other study also is here in this meeting, and you will see what what data we have from this. Dear friends, beyond that, I'll be very uh, quick to add, they have gone to global Japan uh, PKPD studies, uh, the process chain studies, etc. I have no time to discuss. In stride one described about the non-inferiority <coughs> compared to the... So there are two types of glargin. I'm not allowed to take the trade names. So therefore, to make the matters clear and non-confusing, I have put the trade names in the in the bracket, which is allowed in a talk. So we'll be comparing the efficacy and safety of this new interchangeable insulin glargin with the reference insulin glargin. The this is interchangeable biocon insulin is Tom Bezalog. 
that will be first time and last time I will be mentioning. And the reference insulin that we have is the insulin lantus from the son of it. That, that's the only time I will do it with quote in quote. And that's where you will find it with the quote in quote. So it was first in stride one to show the efficacy and safety of bicon glargine compared to the reference insulin glargine in type 1 diabetes called in stride one study. Now, objective was to determine whether this biocon glargine once daily is non-inferior. I told you we are not bio better, non-inferior to reference insulin glargine once daily when administered in combination, Jyoti said, with, with, with a, with a mealtime insulin, main mealtime insulin, with insulin dispro in these patients. Uh, this is a multi-center, open level, randomized, open level because it is given by the pen. They have to use the pen, so it was open level. There was no blinding. A parallel group study, comparative phase three study. There were 558 type 1 diabetes patients. H1C was more than 9.5, and between 18 to 65 years, treated once daily insulin. The screening for four weeks, run in for six weeks, then randomized one is to one, one is to biocons insulin, other is the reference insulin, and followed up for four weeks. Now you will find that the HB1C by the both the insulins are superimposed upon each other. Can you see that? It's superimposed each other, it's almost similar at the, at the, at the, at the week 12, 24, I don't know, week 52, week 36, that's superimposed. Also the fasting glucose, fasting glucose also superimposed each other. Therefore, it is shown here that the actual H1C and actual fasting plasma insulin are very similar. So the conclusion was the mean difference between the biocon glargine and the reference insulin glargine was similar at weeks 24 and 52. No statistical significant difference. And levels of H1C for the patient receiving biocon glargine and reference insulin glargine decreased during run in period. Both basal and the bolus insulin dose, Lispro and the basal insulin, remain the same in both the groups. And the hypoglycemia adverse effects were almost similar. Coming to type 2 diabetes, it was non inferiority to. To in the type 2 diabetes, again it was two cases more, 560 cases to determine whether this biased insulin glargine once daily is non-inferior to the reference insulin in once daily when administered along with the oral drugs in type 2 diabetes mellitus, multi-center study, 560 patients. Type 2 diabetes patients were, were about at least one year before screening, they had type 2 diabetes established, stable dose of an OAD for three months before screening either insulin nave or they might be taking insulin, insulin glargine once daily before. Screening, randomized one is to one, biosimilar insulin glargine given for 24 weeks, reference insulin glargine for 24 weeks and followed for four weeks. And it was shown that the H1C over time, you see both the lines, the biocon glargine and the reference glargine are almost similar. And the reduction in the H1C was minus 0.6, 0.66 statistical not significant and it was a non-inferior to the uh, both 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 ways it was non-inferior and the mean actual glargine dose used over time was also very similar therefore mean change in h1c baseline to week 24 and the and the change in the fasting plasma level were similar rates of hypoglycemia and other adverse reactions were also very similar the third study was the switch study which was looked at the efficacy, insulin dose, safety, and immunogenicity when people with type 1 diabetic mellitus switched between Biocon's insulin glargine and reference insulin glargine. I made it clear here, the patients were taken from the first study in stride 1 study, and they were in arm A or arm B. Arm B continued the reference insulin, the, 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 which I put, put in bracket here, Lantus, uh, for, for, the, for the entire 36 period. The arm A, they first took the biosimilar insulin because they are already on the on the on the insulin uh, the reference glargine so they for 12 weeks plus lispro then of 12 weeks they were changed over to reference insulin that is the lantus insulin plus lispro again after 12 weeks changed over to biosimilar insulin uh, which is uh, which is bezalog and plus lispro uh, to make a long story short it was found the robust design for adequate switch period, it was mandatory for getting a, a certificate uh, from, the, from the periods, the three periods. And the change in H1C from the baseline to the week 36 with the Biocon's insulin glargine was equivalent to reference to glargine. So dear friend, the anytime hypoglycemia was similar, that means side effects were similar, and the other adverse effects were similar, and also the immunogenesis data in the, both the insulins were similar. 
Dear friends, depending on these two data, the US FDA approved the first interchangeable biosimilar insulin product for treatment of diabetes, the first one to get in the world, and so that is our pride. The US FDA approved the first interchangeable biosimilar insulin product indicated to improve the glycemic control, and uh, approval can provide patients to additional safe, high quality, potentially cost effective. The cost was shown by Dr. Jo Dr. Jyoti, I will not put that again, so that's a great data. This has been also evidenced from India for about uh, chronic kidney disease patients. I have 20 seconds more. In 44 type 2 diabetes mellitus with financial constraints, it was changed over to interchangeable biosimilar guardian. And the evidences were minus 2.83 H1C reduction in 12 weeks, which is very significant, similar to the, to the or, or original uh, innovator insulin. And therefore, this is also a switch study. And, uh, and it, this also showed it is beneficial. So, dear friends, I will change by saying that the many challenges of insulin like, like affordability, early insulinization, prevent complications, and rising economic burden can be answered to a great extent by this interchangeable insulin glargian. Thank you very much for patient hearing.